If you go down to the woods today, you might find Bug Man Sam. That was awful. That was awful. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now there are two kinds of keeper in the world. There are those that like the animals to survive and there are those that want the animals to thrive. Which one of those are you? If you are a thriver, that'll be exactly why you've clicked on this video. Because today we're gonna to talk about the safest location for you to find the best food plants for your phasmids. So we are talking the healthiest, the best, the most free from risks for your phasmids. Now, of course, the absolute best place is where they live in the world. So if you've got a South Asian species, for example, heading on right down to Malaysia, Indonesia, somewhere like that, and actually taking clippings from the host plant where they were born. But that is near on impossible. Could you imagine doing a world tour travel every week to feed your animals? It just cannot happen. So we're going to go and talk about the next best place you can go pretty much no matter where you live. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going deep into your most local woodlands. Now, this video is recorded off of my phone, so there may be uh, less quality footage and less quality audio coming your way and I wasn't actually in the woods harvesting food plants for my phasmids I was actually there looking for moss so although we're not taking any clippings in today's video I have recorded on my mobile phone my trip around one of my local woodlands to show you not only that the woods are good but where in the woods are good for you to get your plants so come on join me on this journey now so we're starting our adventure at this point. So I'm currently about 15 minutes into the woodlands, so we can go much, much deeper yet. And this is your safest option when looking for food plants. Of course, you can collect bramble, privet, and things from local hedges, people's gardens, local parks, and so on. And you're likely to be just fine. But there are risks involved in doing so, such as pollution affecting the plants and pesticides. People may use pesticides in their gardens, um, the council may use pesticides in local parks and so on. Also you've got higher risks of things like dog urine, where people have taken their dogs for local walks, um, and, and all sorts of things. That The fumes from cars are one of the biggest killers, guys, so you don't want to get roadside bramble, for example a road, the bramble growing to the side where there's been lots and lots of cars going by. So your number one chance for safety and success on getting happy, healthy stick insects is to go a little bit deeper into the woodlands to pick your plants. And that's what we're going to be doing here today. So there was a long path that led into this woodland area. That path is full of dog walkers, hence why I waited until we got deeper and deeper before I began. I also went off-road to do this. So let's have a little look around in the area I'm in and just see how many food plants we can spot just in this small patch. So right now I'm in the exact same position. See, here's my coffee, as I was before, just with the camera flipped. Now, if we look down, we can already see a type of fern. Now this, this type of fern is not always what people look for when they think of fern eating phasmids but this is an edible fern now what you may commonly think of as fern if we look over here is just down this way so your typical fronds both of which are very very handy and edible by fern eating stick insects now how to know if your stick insects will take to these ferns well i usually base it by Southeast Asian, especially lowland species of stick insect quite often will take to ferns. Species that live in a much more humid environment, as you can see, you can hear there is a small little flow of water coming through here, which is the ideal natural setup for ferns to grow. Top tip for you using ferns or using ferns in any kind of actual vivarium to find out if it's not moist enough, if the humidity levels aren't high enough you'll find that your fern will die easily. 
if you put your fern stalks in water and it's in a humid environment it will last at least a week probably more in fact but I change them every week anyway now if you were to put a fern in the same way in a pot of water but in a drier conditioned vivarium the fronds will actually die out really fast within a couple of days so there's a tip for you now what I love about this area as well is the natural mosses growing along the tree now these mosses can be used in vivariums and I can even use them in some stick insect habitats especially if we want them to take on a mossy form but I prefer to use lichens now if we were to look just up here we also have ivy ivy is edible by many stick insects um, some species will not take to it some species can't digest it properly and the toxins are too high for them and I would never use ivy as a staple diet but as you can see it's there I've still not moved from this spot ladies and gentlemen I've literally walked down a side path the main road is up there and we've already spotted a couple of species of fern and we spotted some ivy and I can tell you what it probably won't be long until we find some bramble now I've not been in this particular patch before I normally go a little bit deeper before I start so let's just walk along and see what we can find we can see more fern along here got a holly bush now that's no good for stick insects I don't know a single species to eat holly I just wanted to point it out because holly's quite pretty right now I'm not a plant expert I can't tell you the exact species names of these plants here here though we've got nettles stinging nettles also edible by certain species of stick insects your O species kangi for example will feed on nettles and pyrocanthus. stinging nettles however I don't think to my knowledge that they're evergreen so these will all kind of die out through winter I think maybe in the shaded areas you could possibly still find some and we can see even more ferns so look at this one small patch 15 minutes in and we are surrounded by edible plants I don't actually know what this plant is I would like to ID it at some point if anybody knows let me know because it is in abundance here anywhere you find with plants in abundance research that plant see if it's worth trying for your stick insects now look at the size of this fern we are ferns galore here ladies and gentlemen they're in a nice shaded area meaning when winter comes they're also safe from most of the frosts so we're going to continue on round more ferns everywhere a massive mounds of ivy look with ferns as well growing out this is fantastic now I do already know that up the path there's definitely some bramble but I haven't actually spotted any on this particular route but I can promise you we will come across some soon so I'm going to have a little bit more of a trek uh, and I will be back with you in a second so the clearing we just came out of is down that little path there this is the main path so if I turn here you can already see plenty of bramble so all plants from the rubus genus so the rubus will consist of your black breeze your raspberries and various others now again this is probably 90% fine to pick I mean it's a little bit off the track but being so close to the path we would really have to clean it up to make sure no dogs have weed in it and so on and so forth so we're gonna actually go deeper to look for our bramble now I don't want you to be put off by what I'm saying today you can take this stuff okay you can take it near path edges and from parks but this video is specifically about your safest possible way so we need to go deeper today so although we're on a path there's something else I wanted to add look at the ruba species we have here now look how clean apart from bits that have been eaten but how clean the leaves look so much fresher so much cleaner than you will find probably in your local parks very green very nutritious perfect stuff now what we have behind me ooh, camera here this is a cherry laurel also eaten by very few species but some species of stick insect now this is actually over a lake and would be perfectly safe for us to pick anything higher up is more likely to be safe as long as there's no car fumes nearby so 
So we spotted another useful plant here in the woods today. So we're going to continue on now a little bit further down. We've still got tons of rubus all around us, ivy all around us, ferns all around us. So woodlands, they're just perfect. I get asked a lot of times, where can I find these things? As long as you've got some local woodlands, I can assure you, you'll get a decent amount of food plants, safe food plants. Whew. Right, I'm starting to get low on time, so we need to get deeper so that I can get back out again. So now I'm walking past what we call the Plym Valley Railway track. There's no trains running at the moment, but look over here. This is over a fence. This is just ivy. But do you remember before I talked about how green the leaves were? Glossy, green, beautiful. You cannot beat very natural woodland leaves. Again, some bramble here or some form of rubus. Even the nettles are holding that beautiful green coloration. That's how you can know that these plants are going to be much healthier for your phasmids. But it doesn't mean just because they're glossy green, they're completely free from pollution. So if you want to be safe, guys, want to be super, super safe, just make sure to wash your plants. Now look, we've got a river down this way, a bit brown right now but a river nonetheless. And you'll often find that plants by fresh water source tend to do a lot better as well. Got some more glossy green ivy here. Now I understand in winter, we'll do a separate video for winter um, about picking plants in winter because in winter your plants will start to discolor. There's less sunlight, uh, there's less nutrition in the actual leaves themselves. Um, and we will recover this kind of thing about finding food plants in winter. Um, but now that it's summer, just everything is just perfect. So I've come across a path that's leading off the track now. So let's see if this can take us to a good destination. So again, we've got plenty of ferns. We've got plenty of nettles, we've got plenty of bramble or rubus. And uh, sorry, I've got to keep looking down Woo, to see where I'm stepping. And, oh, oh, look, 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 look. You see this? This, if I am seeing it correctly, is hawthorn. Another species of plant eaten by various phasmids. So you can recognize hawthorn leaves by these unique shapes. There's also some that are called hagthorn, I believe, which I presume are at just the same. So we have identified another well-established plant for our phasmids. Again, healthy, glossy, and green. So, I just got to hope that the uh, oh, hand in the way. I've got to hope that the audio comes out okay on this because obviously I'm so used to my camera. Um, but now there isn't going to be that much more of this video once I get to an opening. Aha! Okay, so this opens a field and a field of dog walkers. So I think what we're going to do. I don't want to go where dog walkers are ideally but we can go off the track down here. Oh, look at that. Hollowed out part of the tree. Isn't that amazing? So anyway, I lost track of what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, because this video is gonna to come to an end soon, let's just tick off the list here. Going to your local woodlands is quite possibly the best method of getting safe food plants. And going off the beaten track of your local forests 
will almost guarantee you safety. Now, you do need to double check your plants, ladies and gentlemen, for spiders. Spiders can live almost anywhere. But unfortunately, although I love spiders, spider bites can actually kill your stick insects. And the web can trap the young stick insects, the nymphs, and get them killed. So what I would do, for example, say I was going to cut this fern, is I would move any other leaves out of the way I would pull it down to check and I would lift it back to check as well. I'd wave my hand around for the feeling of web. It's very, very important to check them out. Of course, sometimes we're stuck for time. Snip them, pop them in your bag and check them when you get home and just release any spiders into your garden or outside. Look at this. This is a true haven. Here is my proof. Now, I doubt my camera is going to pick it up, but there is a spider right there. Can you see? Now, I didn't spot that just now. There's actually a fly just landed in the web. Just down there. The spider doesn't seem phased yet, but that is right by some fern. They can be literally anywhere. Webs are almost completely hidden from the human eye. So, there, there you go. This was literally just over the log from where I was just showing you the ferns just here. So we've only 10 more minutes walk planned into the woods. I have come across some oak as well. Now you can identify oak again by the shape of the leaves those curves. Not all oak looks exactly like this. This is just one species of oak. But oak is another plant consumed by phasmids and we've got a whole host of it here. And we can move on. We've got some more ivy again. Come down. We've got our nettles and our rubus. You can see how easy it is to find what you need. I know the effort of going to the woods might put you guys off having to do that on a weekly basis, but you get to get out and see nature, you get to see all of its beauty, and you get all the plants you need. So this is gonna be the last clearing of today's video. I just wanted to share with you, I found a old ruined house, I presume is what it was once. So I have to keep looking down because it's a kind of muddy sinking a little bit. Um, I hope you've liked this video. I may well do another one in the woods regarding isopods, um, finding some natural bits for isopods. Um, as I said in the intro, I'm actually here for moss today, not the bramble, which is unfortunate because there's some beautiful bramble here. But um, I already sorted out the sticks uh, day before yesterday. So, yeah, I haven't really spotted any other any other food plants that I'd like to experiment with? Obviously, we've had no privet in the woods. That's more of a, a hedging plant for gardens um, and parks and things. But uh, we've identified quite a few plants today. Enough for most species that you can get hold of. So I think I'm going to go and finish off now. I've got some lovely bits of bark here as well. Um, look at this. Look at that. That's going to come in handy for things like isopods and stuff. Natural mosses on it. Beautiful curved shape. Just going to have to clean it up and uh, hope for the best. Anyway, I'm yabbering on now. Put this down for a second. So I'm going to end this video. Um, thanks for joining me on a journey. I hope that you managed to learn why it's so important to come to the woods for safety factors. No pollution healthy, green, beautiful plants, especially near fresh flowing water. I forgot to add flowing earlier. Stagnant water, no. Flowing water, yes. So I'm just gonna sit and admire this ruin for a bit. I'll see you when I'm home. See ya. So there we have it guys. I hope that helped you out. It was actually a bit of an awkward video to make. I felt like my points weren't quite the way I wanted them to go, but 
that's because there was constantly like either dogs barking in the distance or there was people cycling past when I was on the main roads uh, or the main pathway sorry and it, it was just embarrassing really to be filming like that um, but I hope that you understood my points in, in today's video you know that not only do you go in your woods you go in that little bit deeper if you really want to keep it safe let me know in the comments below if it helped you out and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching guys take care bye bye